Thank you so much for subscribing. Now I have thousand subscribers, thousand people who's willing to hear me out, and I'll continue to try and make the content that is informative as well as interesting for you. So a couple of more interesting stuff coming right up. Since we are celebrating thousand subscribers, I decided to use a thousand paper cranes. So here's one example which I have modeled and done the visualization using V-Ray and a little bit of post-processing on Photoshop. And rather than focusing on just the visualization process, I wanted to show you how to model these things. So inside of SketchUp, it would be something like this. So you have thousand paper cranes that are sort of scattered around but the density would be heavier on the bottom and as it goes up a fewer paper cranes are floating around as well as they are slightly different scales and the rotation and the next one up is this one second option where it's sort of undulating over and they are different scale as well as rotation but it has this sort of a wavy composition the next one up is this one here which is sort of these paper cranes are following a curve as well as uniform rotation all of these have two different tone which is blue and white so if you go here blue and white and blue and white as well so i wanted to show you sort of the modeling technique of this in sketchup so here is sort of an overall view that sort of took me to build those three options for a thousand cranes together the first one was this one that you saw as well as the second one is here and then the third one here now i haven't added the color variation within them however i'll mention how to do that later on so first of all i had to have a row of paper cranes and I got this paper crane model out of 3d warehouse and modified a little bit so if you would search up so I have used this one origami paper crane so in my case if I measure this it's about five inches if you keep your eyes bottom right corner it'll say five inches trying to use 25 rows this way and then 40 this way so it makes up a complete thousand so first of all I need to use this first crane and it's four inches that way and then five inches span this way so if i select all and just have only one left and then with move tool i can just toggle on copy with control and move this way four inches and then i want 25 of them so actually 24 x enter and that will give you a total of 25 cranes and then also move toggle on copy and move this way in five inches and this time I need 40 so 39 X enter and if I select all it will tell me there's a thousand components now I have a thousand cranes now once I have that the next step would be to scatter them around now I'm gonna use an extension called random select which is made by TIG. So if I have that, what I would do is basically just copy this over and then select all. And then what I have done here is that extension, random select, and then I'm selecting 80% of that. And then what I will do is I'll just move tool and then just follow the blue axis three inches up. So those will be above other cranes and then go back into extensions random select 80 percent again and then move up and then three inches again so just repeat this process and then you'll be able to see how it sort of reduces as you go on So last few, I'm just going to push some of them down so that it looks somewhat random. As I have done that, you'll see the bigger clump at the bottom and as you go up, there'll be lesser and lesser cranes. And the next one over, I'm just going to copy that one here and we're going to have to do sort of a random rotation as well as scaling. And I think once you first download this 
component, the axis wouldn't be on the center. You just right click on one of the axis, place, and then what I'm going to do is just designate. And make sure things sort of snap, otherwise it wouldn't align correctly. So there you go, and if I hit escape, it's gonna ask me, and yes. So if I go back in, notice how the axis is sitting exactly at the center of this paper crane. And I want this thing to be scaled and rotated based on this center here. So if I go back and select all, and there's gonna be another extension involved. So CLF scale and rotate multiple, and you can go in there and you'll be able to install that inside of SketchUp. So once you do that, you might have to relaunch SketchUp, but you can go to extensions, create full more tools, and then you're gonna have scale and rotate multiple, and then I want things done randomly. So if I click that, it's gonna give me this dialog, and that is why I want my axis at the center, scale about axis, and scale factor is fine, and the minimum rotation will be zero, max rotation would be 360, enter, and notice how everything starts to rotate and they're still gonna be based on that center that I have designated on. So if I come out, you'll see that it is very similar to what I have generated. So before making half of this blue and white, one of the problem that I have is that all of them are sort of reverse faced because my front face is supposed to be completely white and the back face is supposed to be this blue, which is this color here. So I need to reverse this paper crane. So I can go in here and double click and then select all and then just reverse faces. And same thing on this wing here, reverse face. And then perhaps on that tail as well. So reverse face and therefore it's mostly white. It's hard to avoid because the other side is always gonna show because this is sort of a single face object, but that's fine there. So first let's make all of them white so I can just select on default material and create material and I'm just gonna call it white. So select all of them and then just assign white. So effectively all of them became white. There's no sort of a back face that is showing. And then what I'm going to do is extensions and same thing, random select, and I'm just gonna designate 50% okay. And then half of them are going to be selected close to 500. So same thing, default material, create material, and then I'm gonna designate perhaps either blue or maybe this time let's do slight pink. So let's do pink this time. So I'm just gonna say pink. Okay, and then just click on that to make half of them pink. So that's first option there. So the second option for sort of the undulating surface, we start off from the same thing, which is this one here, and then perhaps put it here. And then I'm going to create a surface that I can put over and then group that. So I'm gonna use something called Sandbox and from scratch, and I'm going to designate something smaller than 10 feet. So I'm gonna type in three inches, in this case three, enter, and then grid spacing is going to be three. So click here in that corner there, and then there, and I'm going to have a sandbox created for that. So I need to select both of the things that I've made and just push it down, as well as just single click on this and bring it up so that the sandbox is there without that surface. Actually delete this at this point and just work on this. So double click to get in there and then I'm gonna use something called smooth. So if you click that and then the radius is gonna be slightly big. So I'm gonna type in five feet. So this sort of a circle will appear and I can just hold down and drag up and drag down. So I can make sort of this undulating surface make it a bulge there. So that sort of undulating surface where I'm going to rest all of these things on. So let me just bring it up so that everything clears properly. And the next thing that I would need is actually the ray tracer from TomTom. And if you happen to have extension store plugin installed on your SketchUp, then I can just go ahead and search ray trace. 
and then Ray Tracer from TomTom, Tom, I can just download it and install. I actually have the origin of the component on the top of the object. So this is very important again. So what I'm going to have to do is that move the origin to the bottom of my component or rather move the entire thing up so that the origin is sitting below sitting below of my cranes. So I can just say 1.5 inch. So my origin is sitting below, that's fine. So at this point, I'm going to select all. The undulating surface is below and then extensions, ray tracer, drop components, and it is going to drop and undulate and cover on top of this surface. So that's basically how I have covered this undulating surface with this grid of objects or paper cranes. And then same thing, select all extension, Chris Fulmer tools, and then scale and rotate multiple, and then randomly, same thing, 360 at the end. Okay, and it is just going to undulate and scale everything randomly for you. In the same practice, select all, perhaps 50% again, and make half of them pink. So if I delete this or hide it, there you go. That was the second option. So let's get started on the third option. So I'm gonna get started on this side here, just make a large surface so it is easy to work with. And then what I'm going to do is just grab one of these crane, copy and come out of it. And then go here and paste it on top of the surface. So I'll first need sort of a curve that's continued that way. You can use an arc tool from SketchUp to draw that sort of curve, but it looks a bit too uniform and I want sort of less uniform curve and Bezier curve is the best tool to do this. So that's what I'm going to use. And all of these links for the extensions, I'm gonna leave it in the description for you to follow so you can just find it there. So let's go ahead and just click on the very first one, classic Bezier curve. However, my, I want my size to be 25 sides because I want 25 by 40. So in my case, I have had, I have had, if I select all, it's 25 components for each row. And then there's 40 of them, which makes up thousand again there. So that's what I'm shooting for. So I want my segments to be exactly 25. So activate this, I can type in 25 S enter. And then you see the precision becomes 25, which means 25 segments. Maybe click on somewhere here and slightly above, not exactly straight above here and go up here. And then I'm going to double click at this point and my segment is finished and I can confirm that my segments are 25 on entity info. And then another extension that I'm gonna use is first select this one and then the component and then the extension from Chris Fulmer again, which is component stringer and then reverse edges. I don't really need to, no. And then scaling is going to be uniform, but total rotation degrees is going to be 360 so that my crane is going to go up and rotate. Okay. And then you notice how the paper crane is following up and rotating. Select all and make it into a group and then move it on to the next. And I'm actually going to turn this into make components, create, and I'm going to rotate that. And I want the circle to be somewhat small. So the circle that I have used was radius two feet there. So I'm gonna do the same. So draw a circle that is two feet. And then scale this thing way down. I'm gonna type in 0 0.1 enter so that it becomes this sort of a size. And then I can just use a move tool and just find at the very bottom of that segment there and then find that point on that circle. And I'm gonna use rotate tool, Q for short, hover around one of the endpoints so I can find the center and toggle on copy by hitting control, click, and then find green axis there, which is directly pointing to that. Click, 360, enter, which comes around and that becomes just two components together. And I'm gonna need division of 40, so slash, four zero enter and then it sort of wraps up 
and then it makes the full circle and there's gonna be an overlap so I just single click and then hit delete you can see there's 40 components in the model and 25 each so which makes up a thousand so I can just copy this over one time once more and then just make it into a group and then go in actually and select all right click explode and same practice random select and have 50 percent of them and then turn them into pink seems like the white ones are still the default color so i can just select all and then just designate white for all of them and again random select 50 percent and turn them into pink so there you go. So I hope you have enjoyed learning about how to manipulate a thousand paper cranes inside a SketchUp to create this installation piece. And if you like the video, please like it and subscribe to the channel if you want to continue watching this type of videos. And by the way, thank you so much for thousand subscribers. It means a lot to me. And I'll see you next time. Bye.